not. Here we come. Amen. John 6, verse number 22. Everybody get a calendar tonight? All right. I've uh, got a couple uh, things on here. Uh, we got praise and worship practice on the 9th. Uh, we'll go over a couple of uh, new songs. Um, and then uh, remember on the 15th, uh, on Wednesday night before service, uh, we're just going to do this because it's different. But we're going to have finger foods and food before church. So rather than, you know, trying to get around, get dinner ready and, and, and all that stuff, hey, just come to church, eat your dinner, have church. Amen. Amen. So, uh, but uh, that'll be on the 15th. John chapter number 6. If you're there, say amen. 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 Special night tonight because uh, concluding the study tonight, we're going to go right into communion. Amen. Remember, uh, the Lord's death until he comes. But uh, John 6, verse number 22. And uh, we're going to be going through uh, all the way to verse 51 tonight. But we will be reading uh, several scriptures uh, together. But as you know, let, let's start out with prayer. Father, in Jesus' name, Lord God, I ask you whether you just bless this study. Lord, anoint me to teach with your Holy Spirit. Lord, the Holy Spirit is the greatest teacher there is. Anoint me, Lord, with your Spirit to teach. Lord, anoint our ears to be able to hear, our hearts to be able to receive, our minds to comprehend, and also to retain what we hear. Lord God, I pray against the fowls of the air that would try to steal this seed from finding a proper lodging place. I bind the fowls of the air in Jesus' name. May this seed go forth and find root in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Does that prayer make a little more sense now after Sunday morning's message? I hope so. <laughs> the fowls of the air. Praise the Lord. As you know, last week we learned how that after Jesus fed the multitude, probably 20,000 or, or more, but after he fed the multitude with the fishes and loaves, he then told his disciples to get into a boat and to go to Capernaum alone. As you know, as they journeyed, a storm came and it hindered the disciples from arriving to the place that they needed to be. And how many know that's what storms do? They keep us from, or they can keep us from getting to the place in which we need to be. But thank God, right in the middle of that storm, Jesus saw them. He saw their labor. He saw them uh, in all their frustration and fear. And they came walking on the Sea of Galilee right to them. And after the disciples willingly received Jesus into their boat, they realized that they were in the destination in which they had set out to arrive in. How many of you know whenever we let Jesus into our storms or into our boat during our storm, we'll find that, man, it's already passed. Amen. Oh, I'll tell you, as long as Jesus is in your boat, it's going to work out. Amen. So this leads us to verse number 22. We're going to read 22 through 25. The day following, okay, what's that? The day after the storm. The day following, when the people which stood on the other side of the sea saw that there was none other boat there, save the one whereunto the disciples were entered, and that Jesus went not with his disciples into the boat, but that his disciples were gone away alone. Howbeit there came other boats from Tiberias nigh unto the place where they did eat bread. And after the Lord had after the Lord had given thanks, verse 24, when the people therefore saw that Jesus was not there, neither his disciples, they also took shipping and came to Capernaum, seeking for Jesus. And when they had found him on the other side of the sea, they said unto him, Rabbi. When camest thou hither? And we'll stop right there for now. Now we've got to remember who these people were that were looking or seeking for Jesus. They were the same people who had just experienced the miracle of the fishes and the loaves. They got blessed with the fishes and the loaves and now they were seeking Jesus for more. They knew Jesus didn't go with his disciples in that little boat that night, that previous night, to Capernaum. So they were trying to figure out how is it that Jesus got to Capernaum because they knew that he didn't go with the disciples. Jesus could have said, well, 
I saw my disciples in the midst of a storm and I decided to walk on the water and I got into the boat with them. And then once I got in the boat, we all ended up in Capernaum uh, miraculously. But that's not what Jesus said at all. For a matter of fact, Jesus never even answered their question as to how he got to Capernaum. Why didn't Jesus answer their question? Because Jesus knew they've got a deep-seated problem in their heart. And I'm going to get right to that issue. Verse 26. Jesus answered them and said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, You seek me not because you saw the miracles, but because you did eat of the loaves and were filled. These people were not following Jesus just because of his miracles, but they also wanted to make Jesus king. Remember, that's why Jesus got away from all that crowd. They wanted Jesus to be their earthly king. They wanted a miracle working king to overthrow the Roman oppression in which they were living under. That is why Jesus and the disciples had to leave. I mean, no, Jesus didn't come the first time to overthrow the Roman government and to establish a kingdom here on this earth. That's not why he came the first time. One day he will do so, but he came the first time because he had to die for the sin of the world. Jesus continued on in verse number 27. Jesus said, Labor not for the meat which perisheth, but for the meat which endureth unto everlasting life, which the Son of Man shall give unto you. For him hath, hath God the Father sealed. I love what Jesus said right here in verse number 27. Jesus said, Labor not for the meat which perishes. These people went through a lot of trouble just to get into the presence of Jesus. Imagine, we know that the disciples had to get onto a boat and go to Capernaum. So all those that were that saw the miracle, the fish and the loaves, can you imagine how many people got into boats and, and they're traveling across that stormy sea that night to get to Jesus. They were laboring so that they could have their bellies filled once again. They were laboring so that they could have a king to rule over them during this life. But Jesus said this, don't seek me, don't seek for things that perish, but seek me for eternal life. Let me ask you a personal question. What are you laboring for? Think about it. Why are we laboring? Why do we do what we do? Are we laboring for the material? Are we laboring for the temporal? Everything we labor for will one day pass away. Only the things that you and I do for God will remain. Can you say amen? Verse number 28. Then said they unto him, What shall we do that we might work the works of God? What do you mean? In essence, they were saying, what do we need to do to please you? We want you to be our king. We want to see your miracles. We want to experience your miracle. You just tell us what we need to do, and uh, we'll do just that. It's, it's kind of as, as if they were trying to say, Lord, tell us what to do uh, to please you, and we will earn that way to please you. How many know that Jesus is not pleased by our efforts? Amen. Oh, no, no, no. God is never going to please by the amount of things that you do. He is only pleased in his son. Amen. Oh, they wanted his miracles. They wanted him to be their king. Just tell us what to do and we'll do it. Verse number 29. I know we're moving fast. We're going to dig in in just a minute. Jesus answered and he said unto them, This is the work of God, that you believe on him who he hath sent. How many know there is only one way to please God, and that is to believe on his Son? Amen. There's a lot of people that try to please God, but they deny that Jesus is the Son of God. It is impossible to please God when that by denying son. I'm glad that I didn't have to earn my salvation. 
salvation. Are you glad that you didn't have to work for your salvation? All you did was you called upon the name of the Lord. You were a whosoever thou shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. All you and I did to receive eternal life was to believe on Jesus Christ as the son of the living God. Because I believed on Jesus as the son, he came in and he transformed my life. Jesus isn't after your performance. Jesus is not after your good works. All he wants is your faith in him. Once your faith is in Jesus Christ, the son of the living God, all those good works are going to follow after. I like what Sister Diane said to her granddaughter. I don't have to go to church. I want to go to church. Why is that? Because she's a child of God. I don't go to church to be a Christian, but I go to church because I am a Christian. I don't time to be saved, but I time because I am saved. I don't witness to others because I am forced to. I witness to others because I desire that they might know the same Jesus that I know. Once again, why are you seeking Jesus? Are you seeking him for what you can get out of your relationship with him or are you seeking him because you desire to know him because you desire to love him our motives mean everything as far as our relationship with God can you say amen verses 30 verse 30 through 31 they said therefore unto him what sign showest thou then that we may see and believe thee what dost thou work? Our fathers did eat manna in the desert, as it is written. He gave them bread from heaven to eat. Now listen to this. As soon as Jesus says, all you need to do is believe on me as the Son of God in order to please God, all these people begin to say, give us a sign. Show us something that we may believe your words. Just the day before, he fed all those people with the fishes and the loaves, two small fish and five barley loaves, but now they're wanting another miracle. They were so quick to forget what God did for them just the day before. How quick you and I often do the same thing, don't we? We forget what God did yesterday. how good God has been to you. Can you say amen? Let's take a moment to think about what God did for us yesterday. Yesterday, God woke you up. Amen. How do I know that? Because you're here tonight. Amen. <laughs> yesterday, God gave you food to eat. Amen. Yesterday, God gave you fresh water to drink. Amen. Yesterday, you had a refrigerator. Refrigerator. I always say refrigerator. <laughs> Refrigerator full of food, didn't you? You had a pantry with all kinds of food in it. You know why you did? Because God put it there. Amen. Oh, it, it blessed me the other night when, or made me think whenever we saw the pictures of those in, uh, in, in Uganda and in Kenya where Brother Patrick was. And here they are. They just got hardly anything, but oh, they, yet they are rejoicing and they are thankful. Why? Because they haven't forgotten what God did for them. If they can praise God like nobody's business, why can't we do the same thing? You know why? Because for a lot of the times, just like those Jewish people, they saw all these miracles. They saw that miracle, the fish and loaves, and they were rejoicing. We want to make you king. But then when Jesus said, you got to believe on me as the son of God, they said, well, you need to show us another sign. A lot of times we're like, Lord, I know what you did then, but show me another sign and then I'll believe you. No, 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 no. That's not what God is after. True faith does not need signs and miracles to believe Jesus. Amen. True faith does not need signs and wonders in order to take Jesus at his word. Our fathers, they said, did eat manna in the desert as it is written. He gave them bread from heaven to eat. Our Moses did that. What are you going to do, Jesus? They 
forgot all about what Jesus did the day before. Verse 32 through 33. Verily, verily, Jesus said, I say unto you, Moses gave you not the bread from heaven. Wow, Jesus letting them know right then. It didn't come from Moses. Amen. A lot of times we're like, oh, Lord, I, that job provided this. No, no, no. God provided it. Amen. Oh, this circumstance provided this. No, no, no. It was God that provided it. Amen. Every good gift, every perfect gift comes down from your Father above. Can you say amen? Quit giving everything else all the credit and start giving God all the credit. Very, yes. very, I say to you, Moses gave you not the bread from heaven. It wasn't Moses. But my Father... You hear that? My father, not your father, my father giveth you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is he which cometh down from heaven and giveth life unto the world. Jesus corrected those unthankful people very quickly. Caleb. He corrected those unthankful people very, very quickly. Jesus said, it wasn't Moses that provided the bread for you in the wilderness but it, or for your ancestors, but it was my Father. For the bread of God is he which cometh down from heaven and giveth life unto the world. You see, the manna that God gave the children of Israel in the wilderness, it took care of their physical needs. But the bread from heaven that God the Father sent down was now going to provide for their spiritual needs. Amen. Jesus is the bread of life. But as we will see in the next verse, the Jews still did not understand what Jesus was saying. Verse number 34, Then said they unto him, Lord, evermore give us this bread. There's some bread that's coming out from heaven. Lord, give it to us. They were getting excited. They were expecting to see another miracle take place. They thought they were going to see some bread miraculously appear. And Jesus said in 35, Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. You're looking for a miracle, just look at me. I am the miracle. I am the bread of life. I mean, no, he is what you need. Amen. He's everything that you need. <laughs> Jesus said unto him, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger. He that believeth on me shall never thirst. Notice how the scripture, Jesus said, he that believeth. That's a continuing believe. Not a one time like I believed on, on Jesus, but it's a continuing act of believing every day. Believing on Jesus Christ. He that believeth on me shall never thirst. Amen. I have found this statement to be 100% accurate and true. Jesus said, he that cometh to me shall never hunger, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. All who truly come to Jesus will no longer hunger and thirst after the things of this world because they will find their new satisfaction in Jesus Christ and Him alone. How many you know once you eat steak, the bloney won't do it? Can you say amen? But once you eat an all beef hot dog, the turkey dogs ain't going to cut it. Can you say amen? I'm going to say a big amen to that. Hallelujah. Oh, once you've had Ben and Jerry's ice cream, Walmart ice cream doesn't cut it. Amen. Oh, I'm telling you, once you've tasted of Jesus Christ, this world ain't going to satisfy you. If you find yourself going back to the beggarly elements of this world, you need to taste and see that the Lord is good once again because all who hunger and thirst after Jesus, they shall be filled. Can you say amen? Everybody that comes to Jesus, they now find their satisfaction in Christ. Do you remember what you used to chase for satisfaction before you got saved? Remember what you used to chase and run after before you got saved? Trying to find something to satisfy you. Some used to chase alcohol and drugs, relationships. 
But once you found Jesus, you no longer had to run to those things. Because Jesus quenched your thirst. And he even quenched her. Fit satisfied that hunger that you looked for. Can you say amen? amen? Can we just lift up our hands and thank the Lord for doing such a work? Lord, I thank the Lord. I don't have to hunger and thirst after the things of this world anymore. That appetite has been broken, Lord. Now I hunger and thirst after righteousness, Lord. I thank you for that. I thank you for everyone here tonight, Lord. God, there was a time whenever we hungered after sex. There was a time in which we hungered after drugs. There was a time in which we hungered hungered after pornography. There was a time in which we hungered after alcohol and perversion. But Lord, once we found you, we no longer had to search for those other things. Lord. But you satisfied that longing in our soul. Amen. That's what's so awesome about getting saved. Amen. Since you don't have to search anymore, you found everything you need in Jesus. Can you say amen tonight? Amen. Jesus is the bread of life. And those who know Jesus will never have to hunger after the things of this world. John 6, verse number 36. Let me stop right here. I feel this. What if I am hungering after the things of this world? You ain't eating enough of Jesus. Amen. Why is my hunger for the world increasing? You ain't had enough of Jesus. You need to get down to an altar of repentance once again and say, Lord, But if you starve yourself, spiritually speaking, yes. you're going to find yourself hungry for sin. Amen. Verse number 36. But I said unto you that ye may you have seen me and you believe not. There's a lot of people who have seen the results of God's miraculous power, but yet they still refuse to believe in God. Verse 37. All that the Father giveth me shall come to me. And he that cometh to me, I will in no wise cast out. Aren't you glad that whenever you were lost in sin, you came to Jesus, he didn't say, huh, go take a bath first. Come on. Come on. Amen. Oh, maybe you, maybe you came to Jesus, you were addicted to alcohol. Jesus didn't say, wait, wait, wait. Once you get off of the alcohol, then you can come to me. No, no, no. He said, come as you are. Amen. You come as you are, you won't leave the same. Amen. Oh, all oh, who are thirsty. Oh, who are we? Oh, to do is come unto him. Can you say amen tonight? Oh, he willingly received you and I. He knew your every secret. He knew about every sin. He knew every problem and hang up that you had. Oh, but he still willingly received you in. Hallelujah. He that come unto me, Jesus said, I will in no Because he ain't going to lose 
any of them. Amen. God doesn't lose his sheep. One day he will raise up our loved ones at the rapture. First Thessalonians 4, 16 through 18. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Amen. Jesus said, all that which he hath given me, I should lose nothing, but should raise it up in the last days. Amen. If you've got a loved one that's gone on to be with the Lord, that's passed away, there will be a reunion one day. Can you lift up your hands up to the Lord and say, thank you, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. I said, hallelujah. There reunion coming. There is a homecoming coming. Can you say amen tonight? He has the ability and one day he will to raise up those dead. Can you say amen? amen. John 6 40. And this is the will of him that hath sent me that everyone which seeth the son and believeth on him may have everlasting life and I will raise him up in the last day. Jesus here told us how to make sure that we are ready for the rapture or the resurrection. Everyone that believes on the Son will have everlasting life. That's pretty simple, isn't it? Everyone that believeth on the Son shall have everlasting life, and I'll raise them up in the last day. How do I know that I'm ready for the rapture? You can know that you're ready beyond a shadow of a doubt if you place your faith in the fact that Jesus Christ is the Son of the living God. You say that's it? Yeah. Because whenever you believe that, it's going to change your life. God's not after your works. He's after your faith. Amen. God's not after your works. He's after your faith. Once He has your faith, all the works will be a fruit of it. Can you say amen? Verse 41. The Jews then murmured at Him. Because he said, I am the bread which came down from heaven. Now notice why the Jews murmured. Because Jesus said, I came down from heaven. If Jesus said he came down from heaven, he must be saying, he's God. And he was God. Amen. He was. Jesus was God. He is God. John 6, 42. And they said, is not this Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How is it then that he said, I came down from heaven? You see, these people that had just experienced the fish and loaf, now they're beginning to doubt Jesus. They knew about Jesus' earthly mother and father Joseph. They knew and they heard the stories about the virgin birth, but they obviously did not believe it. As long as Jesus was performing miracles before them, they wanted to make him their king. But as soon as the miracles stop, they begin to lose interest in Jesus. Amen. Jesus is not a jack of the box. He's not someone you can turn and turn and turn. And here he pops up and he's going to give you a miracle. He's not. He didn't come to entertain you with a miracle. He came to save you from a life of sin. He came to give you life and life more abundantly. He came to transfer you from darkness into life. Go seek a miracle. Seek the miracle maker. Can you say amen? Jesus isn't. Can Jesus perform miracles? Oh yeah, we know that. We preach that. We believe that. But there's a real danger whenever we're, we seek miracles and we're no longer seeking Jesus. Because Satan himself can produce lying wonders. Amen. Jesus has no interest in being your jack in the box. He wants a relationship with you. Can you say that? Amen. John 6, 43 through 45. Jesus therefore answered and he said to them, Murmur not among yourselves. Jesus knew what they were saying. Because he knows the very thoughts and the intents of our hearts. 
No man can come unto me except the Father which sent me. Draw him and I will raise him up in the last day. Well, Jesus liked talking about the rapture. Amen. 45, verse 45. It is written in the prophets. They shall be all taught of God. Every man therefore that hath heard and hath learned of the Father cometh unto me. Let's read that last part again. And they shall all be taught of God. Every man therefore that hath heard and hath learned of the Father cometh to me. If you've learned from the Father, you're going to come to me, Jesus was saying. Remember, Jesus is speaking to a group of people that prided themselves on their religious knowledge and practices. They were Jews. They served one God, unlike the pagans that were all around them. They lived and they learned and studied the law of Moses. But yet Jesus said to them, if you really learned of my Father, you would come to me. There's a lot of people that have a head knowledge of the Bible, but yet they really do not know Jesus. Jesus said, if you really learned of my Father, you would come to me. Verse 46. Not that any man hath seen the Father, except for he which is of God. He hath seen the Father. Jesus said, nobody's seen the Father, but I have. Oh, hallelujah. Verse 47, 48. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me hath everlasting life. Isn't that simple, church? Amen. He that believeth on me hath everlasting life. I am the bread of life. Amen. Amen. How do you get everlasting life? Believe on the Son of God, Jesus Christ. Place your faith in the fact that He is who He said He was, the Son of God, and He died for your sins. Amen. 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 Verses 49 through 51. Covered a lot of scriptures tonight, huh? Amen. A long chapter, though. <laughs> John 6, 49 through 51. Jesus said, your fathers did eat manna in the wilderness, and they're dead. Mm -hmm. Wow. Doesn't sound like something you want to say to somebody. Huh? <laughs> your fathers did eat manna in the wilderness, and they're dead. This, I believe Jesus was pointing to himself here. This is the bread which cometh down from heaven. That a man may eat thereof and not die. I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. I like what Jesus said. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. I was talking to my mom just this morning, actually. You know how I told you we're in the process of buying another home? And my dad, he said, man, you've already been paying for 10 years on your house, you know, and, uh, you know, just kind of this and that. Not that he's against it, but he's just more like, he's lived in the same house forever. And that's the way I was until I had 18 people moving two doors down from me in one house. And I said, that, that's it, we gone. <laughs> And uh, anyway, I was talking to my mom today, and I said, Mom, I said, how old are you? And, or we were just talking about financial things. And uh, I said, I don't want to one day just be, I don't want to have to wait. And, okay, my house is paid off, and I'm 80 years old. I told my mom, I said, how long am I going to get to enjoy not paying a mortgage if I'm 80? My mom said, well, I don't know. I said, Mom, how many people do you know that are over 80 years old? And if we honestly think about it, there's not a lot that are over 80 years old. <laughs> I got a grandma that's 90-something years old. I told my mom, though, I said, because my mom, when I said that, my mom was like, boy, well, I'm, I'm going to be 60 soon. What do I got? 20, 25 years? 
I said, Mom, thank God for eternal life. <laughs> Amen. Oh, how do you get eternal life? You got to eat of the bread of life. Because yes. one day, see, death here is just entrance into eternal life over there. It's just a door we've got to walk through to have eternal life. Amen. One day, we're all going to step through that door. Amen. We're not to fear it. Amen. We're not to fear it. Doesn't mean we're wanting it either. <laughs> Amen. What's that old song? Everybody wants to go to heaven, but nobody wants to die. Amen. <laughs> I want to go to heaven, but I don't want to die. I told my mom, though, I said, but the rapture's going to happen before then. Amen. But you see, I, I'm just saying, you can know. I, I know you all love the Lord tonight, but you can rest with a peace in your heart knowing I'm ready to meet God no matter what. Amen. I'm ready to meet God because I've eaten of the bread of life. Amen. And you are blessed tonight because you've eaten of that bread. Amen. There's people with millions of dollars. They've got all the fame and fortune in this world, but yet they're poor. You know why? They're hungry. You know why? Because they have need of this bread of life. One day they'll pass away and they'll be able to take nothing with them. But whenever we die one day because, of, because we need of this bread of life to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. As Brother Randy comes to the piano, I want to ask tonight if maybe Brother, if Brother Charlie and Brother Wayne, can you guys get our communion stuff tonight? And uh, I'll let you guys pass it out as Brother Randy uh, plays something on the piano. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. My kids asked before church tonight, they said, Dad, can we, can we take communion? I said, well, there's a couple conditions. I said, number one, I said, are you saved? They said, yeah. I said, you love the Lord? They said, yeah. I said, well, what does it mean? And they said, well, the cracker represents the body, and the juice represents the blood. I said, yeah, but why are you doing it? Nathan said, we're doing it to remember what Jesus did for us. Amen. Amen. That's why we're taking communion tonight. We're going to eat of this bread of life that Jesus was speaking about. The bread that was given for you and I. Hallelujah. As Brother Randy's playing something unto the Lord, uh, Brother Charlie and Brother Wayne, if you guys could just pass this out to him. Yeah, the kids can do it. Yeah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus.
You know, Jesus at the Last Supper, just before he's about to go to Gethsemane to be arrested and eventually crucified, he gave thanks. He broke it. He said, Take and eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. We don't take communion to be saved. We don't take communion just to take communion. We don't really ever have communions just, okay, this day we do communion. You just do it as the Lord leads us. There's no rule on when you do it or how often you do it. Just do it as the Spirit leads you. But as often as you do it, you do show the Lord's death until he comes. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for the bread that came down from heaven, the bread of life that came down from heaven and was given for us. It was broken for us. It was devoured, if you will, for us. Father, I thank you for your son, Jesus. We believe beyond a shadow of a doubt, Jesus Christ is the Son of the living God. You sent forth your Son to die for us. He is the bread of life. He satisfies our hunger. There was a time, Lord, you know, God, whenever we hungered and long for things of this world but your bread from heaven Jesus Christ once we receive that bread oh once we ate of that bread of Jesus Christ gave us a new life satisfy that longing that we had we thank you for the bread we thank you Lord for this cracker that represents the bread of life the body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ you can eat the cracker that represents the body of our Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your body that was broken for us. 1 Corinthians 11, 25-26 says, After the same manner also he took the cup. When he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and you drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till it come. Heavenly Father, once again, we thank you for the bread of life that came down from heaven in your son Jesus. Lord, he shed his blood on Calvary's cross for the remission, the forgiveness of our sins. Without the shedding of blood, we can never have forgiveness. No one here on this earth would have ever been worthy to die for the sin of the world. Say, so you came. God became flesh. The Word became flesh and dwelt among us. We beheld His glory, the only begotten of the Father. Lord, we thank You for the blood that was shed 2,000 years ago on Calvary's cross. Life is in this blood. Blood of Jesus. Lord, I ask you, Lord, that we would always remember the significance of the blood when we sing, when we preach, when we pray, when we testify. Lord, if it wasn't for your blood, we wouldn't be here. We thank you for the blood of Jesus. You can drink the grape juice. It represents the blood of the New Testament. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can we lift up our hands to the Lord tonight? Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord.